This is Nicole Spore for Simon Says Stamp and welcome to the March 2022 edition of my Making the Cut series here at Simon Says Stamp. Today we're going to be creating this beautiful flower garden using dies. We're going to start with the detail ringlet plate for our background and then I am using these following dies for my flower garden today. We're using five different dies, so let's go ahead and ink up our background detail ringlet plate with Rustic Wilderness Distress Oxide ink. I like using the, de the uh, detail plates for backgrounds as they provide a nice subtle background rather than plain white cardstock. So you can kind of consider them almost like a plain background, but you see that really fine detail when you're finished. You could do like an ombre effect of ink blending here. You could ink up just part of the panel. There's lots of different ways to achieve a similar result. Originally, I thought I would try to keep the ink in the center of the panel, but I kind of quickly decided that I didn't really like how that looked, and so I am going to go ahead and do more of an ombre effect where the ink is much heavier down near the bottom, which right now is up near the top, and lighten my hand, lighten the inking up towards the top of the panel. So this is all one color and I am achieving a beautiful ombre effect just with the Rustic Wilderness ink. I love how it really makes the detail ringlet design pop out. Let's go ahead and go back over where we have already inked and ink up the bottom part of that panel with a much heavier hand and then gently or kind of lighten, lift up the pressure as we get towards the top of the panel. Then I'm going to spritz the entire panel with a little water from a Distress sprayer to create some oxidation little droplets all over the background. I want to move my dyes out of the way so that those remain dry so I can start coloring here in a minute. I'm going to blot up the water, I'm going to clean my work surface, and then I am going to go ahead and take some white pigment ink. So instead of leaving the edges white as I started to do, I'm actually going to take some white pigment ink around the edges here in just a second. I'm going to remove the foam insert from my MISTI and I am going to go ahead and place my background right in my MISTI and take the Friendship or pardon me, the thank you text background from Simon Says Stamp. Place that in the Misty. Ink this up with the Rustic Wilderness. Oh, I forgot. I did stamp it with the Unicorn White ink first. Generally, when I do this technique, I love how white pigment ink looks over a background. Um, and I left this in the video today because I wanted you to see how it just disappears. You really don't see it at all. Um, so I'm going to press that down. And when I lift it up, I just didn't feel like I got the detail that I was looking for. In the darker part of the inking, you can see it a little bit, which is fine, but I wanted it to be slightly more prominent. So without uh, redoing the background, there's no need to redo it. I'm simply going to ink up the background with Rustic Wilderness and stamp this again. This is going to give almost a little bit of a shadowed effect, especially where the inking is darker down near the bottom, where you can see a little bit of the white and the green once it's completely dry. But this way, you can really see that text background a little bit more. I always love a good text background over an ink blended or stenciled design. I'm going to use an acrylic block as a palette so that I don't contaminate my white ink pad and I'm going to take a blending brush and blend around the edges of the panel with that white pigment ink. That way I'm never taking my blending brush back to the ink pad and I can clean this all up easily when I'm finished. You can see my blending brush picked up a little bit of the green ink from the background. That's why we don't want to touch the white pigment ink pad with that. Now I'm taking the Simon Says Stamp large grid paper pad underneath where I'm going to color with my Copic markers. This is going to protect my work surface as I can easily rip off this paper and throw it away when I'm done. I'm going to ink up my first die cut. This is the Poppy Stem and I'm going to color it with Copic markers. 
I have those shown there on the screen with the cap up as well as in the description here on the video on YouTube. If you scroll down below the video, I have listed the marker colors out for each flower for easy reference. I'm making sure not to overblend the flowers so that they have lots of texture and it looks more like actual flower petals. In the center of my poppy stem, I'm going to use some nice deep dark browns. And then I'm going to take G24 and 28 for the stem. Now G24 tends to be a lot like Rustic Wilderness. So as I'm adding the G28 and I lay the flower on my background to see how it's going to look against that beautiful Rustic Wilderness background, I almost felt like it blended in a little too much. So I went back with more G28 and added a little more detail. On screen, I think it... Um, shows the difference more that in, than it did in person. Next, we're going to be coloring in the etched evening bloom with our 22, 24, and 46, plus my darker color, which is our 59. Again, we definitely don't want to over blend. So you're gonna notice I'm doing more of a flicking or feathering motion, being careful not to over blend my coloring. Coloring in white die cuts, die cuts, pardon me, like this is one of my very favorite techniques with any sort of die cut. It completely transforms and customizes the die cuts, giving you that no line coloring look that you can achieve with stamps, but you're doing it with dies. I love all the texture, depth, and dimension coloring in your images like this gives. Here is a little R46. I already went in with my R. 59 and added some of that dark color. I think I'll go back and add even more coming out from the center. You'll notice I went bold and bright for my flowers so they would really show up against the green of the background. For the stem on this flower, or pardon me, for the flower center, we're using Y08 and 19 as well as YR04. And then we're going to go with YG21, 17, and 23 for the stem. This is going to be a much more limey green stem that will really show up against the background as well as provide a little bit of a difference between the darker color. I'm going to stick with these two green color combinations for the stems on all of my flowers, just kind of alternating to mix it up a bit. Look how pretty this flower is. I love it. Any of the flowers would be beautiful on their own, but I really love creating this flower garden along the bottom edge of my card. Next, I'm going to go in with E49, and I'm adding some little dot detail right around the flower center, coming out into the petals just a bit. I love how this adds even more interest to the finished flower. I'm using a really light hand and just the tip of my marker to add those little dots. So now that we have two of the flowers, let's go on and move to our third flower. For this one, we're using the new blossom dye and we're gonna be coloring this in with pink. I'm using RV02, six and nine for my pink color combination. This is a super bright pink, but I absolutely love the bold color of this with the rest of the colors I'm using on this card. RV02 is going to have quite a bit more co uh, colorless blender in it, meaning that it's going to kind of blend that color out. And then I was able to go back with RV09 and kind of just feather in some more texture and then color in the stem and leaves with YG21, 23, and 17. I love the pinks on this. Totally giving me springtime vibes working with all of these beautiful florals. And remember, Simon Says Stamp has lots of amazing uh, flower dyes that you can use for your cards. I love the addition of the pink here with the orange and the red. 
So next we are going to be using the etched flower buds and we're going to do kind of a purple here with BV 11, 13, and 17. And these are blue violet colors and I do think I didn't get quite the detail the first time around when coloring in these images. So what I ended up doing was going ahead and coloring them just like normal, uh, lightest color, darkest color, mid-tone color, and then I went back with my light and it almost blended it out too much. So we're gonna go back with BV17 and along the etching lines in this die, we're going to add in more BV17 to really build that detail. Sometimes you have to go over an image more than once just to get it looking the way you want it to. So we will do the same thing for this flower. And then the stems for these, I guess it's two flowers. A couple of the images have two. So the new blossom obviously had um, a blossom opening and then a bud. And then this has two blossoms on it, which is really fun. And then I think all the rest are just one flower each. We're gonna add a little G24 and 28 for the stem. So back to our darker color combination. And then I'm just playing around, seeing how it's looking. And it's time for our beautiful etched layered daisy, one of my favorite dies ever from Simon Says Stamp, YG21, 23, and 17 for the stem. This is a three-piece die. So this is the only one that I've included in my flower garden here today that takes three pieces to put together. We're going to use Y00 for the petals on my flower and then go ahead and feather out with Y19 and Y08. We're doing a yellow daisy here and then we'll have a nice brown center for the finished flower. This is a really fun one to put together. I almost think a whole little flower garden of daisies would be fun as well all at different heights, maybe along the bottom of a landscape style card. Next, we're gonna go in with E44, 47, and 49 and color in the flower center. With a base of E44, we're gonna do a little dot detail with E49 and 47 to give it some texture and just do a nice base color on the layer that goes underneath just in case any white shows through. Next, we are ready to stamp our sentiments for our card. I'm using greetings from the Simon Says Stamp XL Greetings 3 stamp set, and we're gonna stamp thank you so much. Actually, I sorry, we're gonna stamp the smaller sentiment first from Tiny Words Encouragement. I'm using the Rabbit Hole Designs Powder Tool on black cardstock, and we're gonna take There Is No One Quite Like You from the Tiny Words Encouragement and stamp this on the black cardstock with embossing and watermark ink and heat emboss with white embossing powder. Once we have stamped and embossed this sentiment, I will be die cutting this with a sentiment labels die, my very favorite and most used die from Simon Says Stamp my most used die from anywhere. I love these dies and I use them all the time. While we have our Misty out, we're gonna go ahead and take a piece of vellum. And now we're gonna take a greeting from the XL Greetings 3 stamp set. Thank you so much. And we are going to stamp this on the vellum with clear embossing ink and heat emboss with white embossing powder before die cutting with the coordinating die from the XL Greetings 3 set. I love the look of the white embossing on the vellum for this greeting. If you have any embossing powder sticking to somewhere where you don't want it, I always just take a dry paintbrush and remove those flakes. 
I'm going to go ahead and clean my stamp, move my Misty out of the way, and grab my Spellbinders Platinum Die Cutting Machine, and we are going to die cut our greetings. I always like to use a little post-it tape to hold my sentiment in place, or my die in place over the sentiment while I'm die cutting so it doesn't shift. We're going to grab the sentiment label die that fits this greeting. This is the second smallest from the set, and run these through our die cutting machine. For the thank you greeting, that's going to run right through. For the sentiment label greeting, I like to run it through with one side and then I'll flip it around and run it through the other. So I'll show you that here in just a second. Let's move our vellum greeting out of the way. I like to run the sentiment label die through vertically rather than horizontally. We're going to flip it around, line it up with the other side, and this is going to give you a perfectly die cut greeting. I generally don't run it through all of the way. I run it through only enough till I hear it click and cut that other end. It's time to put everything together. I am going to speed it up a little bit. We're going to start by gluing our flowers down in place. And I'm going to be pretty um, sparing with my glue. That way I can tuck my flowers to create this beautiful flower garden. I don't want them to all be, you know, in the front. I want them to kind of overlap here and there. Tuck our little poppy here. And then we have our daisy. which I probably should go ahead and glue that together first. There we go. And then we're going to hide the liquid adhesive behind the white embossing for thank you so much and adhere it in the upper right corner of the card. I'm placing some acrylic blocks on top to help, every, help hold everything flat until that liquid glue dries. I'm placing some foam adhesive back behind my sentiment strip, and that's going to be adhered right underneath our thank you so much greeting or underneath the word much. Finally, we are going to adhere our panel to a white top fold card base. We're going to trim anything that's hanging off the edge. We're going to trim that flush, and then we're going to finish with a little red heart accent at the end of thank you so much. I think we'll place it right there. And my glue was clogged. There's a little dab of glue, a little red heart, and that is going to finish up our card. Now I did end up taking a white gel pen and I'm going to add a little white dot detail to the center of my daisy as well as my um, evening blossom, the red flower. I added a few additional little brown dots to the poppy just like I did with the evening flower and that is it. Thank you so much for joining me today for the March edition of Making the Cut here at Simon Says Stamp. The supplies I used are listed and linked down, the video, down below the video for your convenience. Thank you so much for joining me today, and we'll see you next time.